The mind of a serial killer is incredibly fascinating. You have to wonder what makes them tick. So imagine a television series that gets you into the mind of a serial killer who only kills other murderers. I'm of course talking about Dexter. With such a brilliant concept, you can't go wrong, right? Well, let's find out. The show begins with a serial killer named Dexter, who works with the police department as a blood spatter analyst. Dexter uses his access to the criminal database to discover more victims from the stock and kill. Of course, the chances of him getting caught are high when he's surrounded by cops almost daily. Dexter's original concept is incredibly alluring. This is what separates it from other procedural crime dramas, such as CSI or Criminal Minds. The plot for Dexter, while rarely without flaws, remains generally entertaining for all eight seasons. The only season that almost becomes unbearable to watch is season six. This is because it gets too carried away with its religious themes. That being said, in my opinion, the series is a must-watch. It needs to be seen twice in order to truly understand the witty writing and the strong pacing. Even the controversial ending isn't as bad as fans make it out to be. It's during the second viewing that Dexter makes you question your own moral compass, wondering if you should be rooting for a serial killer to, well, kill. As a whole, it's pretty exciting throughout. It features plenty of plot twists to keep you immersed. And despite its seemingly small budget during the earlier seasons, each episode feels like it's been directed professionally. Another feature of the strong plotting lies within the character development. Very few characters, if any, feel one-dimensional in Dexter. Surpassing Dexter's plot is the strength of the acting on the show. To begin with, Michael C. Hall plays Dexter Morgan. Michael's acting background in theater makes his role feel more realistic than those of the rest of the cast. For a character with two personalities, Michael easily brings both to life. The only actress able to keep up with Michael is Jennifer Carpenter, who plays Deborah. Although Jen's acting style differs from Michael's substantially, her conviction towards acting makes Deborah feel like a real person and not just a character. Two other actresses with a strong presence on Dexter are Julie Benz as Rita and Lauren Velez as Maria. Each portrayed their characters with believable emotions, but I had to admit that there were times when both pulled me out of the show due to a single poor scene. Next we have Eric King as Sergeant Dokes and C.S. Lee as Vince Basuka. Despite the show's dark subject matter, both actors offer hilarious comedy relief thanks to the idiosyncrasies each actor brings to the table. The final major characters in the show are played by David Zayas, James Ramar, and Desmond Harrington. David and Desmond both enriched Dexter's already phenomenal cast with styles that demonstrated careful attention to their character's behavior. However, possibly due to the writing of each character, each comes off like they belong on a soap opera. As for James Ramar, who portrays Dexter's father, he's probably the most unbelievable character of all. It was hard to enjoy a character whose unrealistic emotions never managed to captivate my attention. Besides the major characters, there were several recurring cast members such as Margot Martindale and John Lithgow, who surpassed the main cast. Adding to this is the witty dialogue, which not only lent itself to making each character unique, but also to making some hilarious moments in the series. Dexter's presentation is really killer. Some of the best visuals and audio quality I've ever seen on television can be attributed to this show. Oftentimes, it feels like a high budget film. The series also makes use of several practical effects, such as its use of blood and little noticeable CGI making it all the more timeless. Not to mention the use of both on-site locations and incredibly detailed sets to add to Dexter's realistic Miami setting. However, the music by Daniel Licht is the real star of the show. The soundtrack is incredibly memorable and worth putting on your iPod if you're a fan of composers such as Danny Elfman. Put simply, Dexter gets a lot of hate for all the wrong reasons. I really think that it's even better to watch the second time around. Despite its numerous flaws with the plot, and characters. The entire series is a must-buy. Dexter gets an 8.5 out of 10. So thanks for watching guys. Do you agree with my opinion on Dexter or do you think the series is overrated? Let me know in the comments below. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video be sure to like and share it on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All the links for those can be found in the description below. Also, don't forget to subscribe by hitting that big button over there. And while you're at it, why not click that email checkbox so that our videos don't get buried with all the other channels you're subscribed to. I'm Zach. And I'm Kyle. And we're Battlefront, Battlefront Productions. Productions. Really? You mean the subscribe button bigger than us? Well, it is prettier than us. <laughs>